Hi, this is Larry Parman with the estate planning law firm of Parman and Easterday. Today I want to talk a little bit about what your assets consist of in the context of creating an estate plan. Because all of those assets have to be connected to your plan or will eventually be connected to your plan one way or the other at some point in time. So the obvious, we all know we own things, right? So our assets clearly include things like our checking account, savings accounts, those wonderful half of 1% or 1% assets that some of us own, or CDs. Our assets also include our investment accounts, our brokerage accounts, also our IRAs, annuities, farmland, and the equipment that goes with that and the crops that go with that, the livestock that goes with that. For those of you who may be farm and ranch clients, any business interest that we own, And we might own that in sole proprietorship. We might own it ourselves without any incorporation. We might own it as a partnership. It might be incorporated with another partner or not. It could be in an LLC or perhaps just a regular S Corp. And then in some parts of the country, uh, we have mineral interests. And so the point is we add up all these assets. And from an estate tax point of view, what's important about that is that those assets are valued at their net worth fair market value. That's for purposes of determining whether or not we owe estate tax. Now there are a couple of assets that I did not include and I did that to make this point. Those are the ones that are obvious there are a few that are not quite so obvious. For example, what about patents? What about trademarks? What about notes where people owe us money? We sold a piece of property and we're carrying the note, for example. All of these type of assets will be includable in our estate for estate tax purposes as well. So we go through and we tally all that up and we come to a number and if that number exceeds the current estate tax exemption, then we may have an estate tax problem. If we're under that exemption amount, then we shouldn't, should not have an estate tax problem. And if we're a couple, we can combine, we can create two exemptions if we plan correctly. You want to be sure not to inadvertently lose one, but we'll talk about that in another session. But here's the wild card in determining what we owe, or what we own rather, for estate tax purposes. And that's the whole issue of life insurance. What I want you to remember about life insurance is that it's not the cash value that's included in your estate, unless it's a policy on another individual that you own. If it's a policy that's on your life, you are the insured and you are the owner, then that death benefit of that policy will be includable in your estate for estate tax purposes. So for example, beginning January of next year when the exemption is only $1 million and $2 million if you plan correctly for a couple, if you have assets totaling as a couple, let's say $1.5 million and you have another $1 million term life insurance policy, now suddenly that's going to be added to the 1.5 million and other types of assets that you own and it may cause you to exceed the exemption thereby requiring some advanced estate planning. So my point is and the lesson to be learned today is that when you're thinking about your assets don't get caught up like some do and saying well this is what I paid for it in 1958 because the IRS doesn't care what you paid for it. They only care what its fair market value is at the date of death. Now, there's some IRS provisions that will allow you to modify that number a little bit based either on 
alternative uses or alternative tax values. But for illustration purposes today and as a teaching point, we just want you to focus on the fact that all of your assets will be totaled at fair market value at the time of death. And those assets will include the death benefit of any life insurance policy on your life where you are the owner. Keep that in mind when creating an estate plan. We appreciate you being with us today for this brief estate planning overview. You can contact us one of two ways. Our phone number is 405-843-6100. Or you can reach us at www.parmanlaw.com. We appreciate your time. This is Larry Parman, and we'll talk again soon.